Freelancers and solopreneurs, like my fellow voice actors, try to find their clients through freelancing websites like Freelancer, Upwork, and Fiverr. Now, these platforms do have their benefits, like they do your paperwork for you, they put your marketing on autopilot, they do your paperwork for you, and they essentially help you find your first loyal clients. But there's usually a catch. Either they take a cut from your earnings, or you have to pay a membership fee, or a unique combination of both. The more perks, the better. Yeah! But what if you could keep all of the revenue? What if clients worked with you directly? That's completely possible with cold email. Now the thing with cold emails is it's got its own cold email police. So here's the thing. If you send 100 unpersonalized emails a day, a lot of them are going to end up in spam. And the domain that you used for that email address is going to have a bad reputation. And what that means is that you're going to stop receiving emails and you won't be able to send them. Yeah, that's happened to me. And that's also why we're reviewing Hexaspark, which happens to be today's sponsor. And although this video is sponsored, I'm free to share my complete and unfiltered opinion on Hexaspark. Okay. Let's dive right in. Welcome to the Hexaspark dashboard. Oh my goodness, this is such a clean looking UI. It is simple, but it is not plain. As you can see, there are subtle gradients in the shadows right there, which is very classy to me. You can see that white is the dominant color and orange is what they're using for calls to action. And you can switch from light mode to dark mode. And ooh, that is a nice, cool, bluish kind of dark. It is not the pitch black, 6-0 black in other dark mode interfaces. Really hurts the eyes. So I personally prefer light mode anyway. To the left, you have your menu and you can collapse that with a click of a button and you are left with the icons. Very nice. To the right, you have another menu with the Hexa suite of tools. You have Hexamatic, Hexa Watch, Hexameter. And maybe if you're not familiar with these tools, this, this might feel like they're dangling the other tools as an upsell. At first, I thought of it that way. Maybe that's true to an extent, but I think they did this very tastefully. Other tools would have a very clear call to action like subscribe now, upgrade, and in bold capital letters. But here, they're just right there, very subtle, no call to action, and you can collapse that menu so you never have to see it again. Actually, the menu did reappear when I refreshed my browser. So, well, I really don't mind because it's very tastefully done. If you do have these other tools, for instance, I have Hexamatic myself, then it becomes a feature and not a distraction. These tools do really work well with Hexaspark, so I don't mind this. Okay, so let's collapse that. And as you can see, I do have a five stack Hexaspark plan, which means I do have access to workspaces and team features. So over here on the top left, I can click default workspace and I can create new ones. And to my existing one, I can actually invite members of my sales team into this dashboard. So I did just that and presumably I would be able to set them from pending to some kind of moderator or manager role or maybe just a member. So for the rest of the circles and analytics that you see right here, I just left that blank for now with no data so you can see it from a clean slate perspective, but I will be importing contacts so you can see it in actual use. Okay, let's open the menu again so you can see the label. Let's go to the unified inbox. Okay, when it's blank, it looks like this. Campaigns, no, no campaigns, but when you do click the plus button, you can see all of these settings right here. A lot of them, a lot of this is really grounded on whether or not you have contacts already. Going to email templates, if you are starting from scratch, you can actually hit plus new template and you can click choose from template library on the top right. And woo, they do have quite a few templates right here for many different purposes. Guest post inquiry, pitch emails, partnership with influencer. Huh, would I actually use this? Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. Idea one, two, three. So yeah, this is a diverse set of templates. You can close that. When you go to icebreakers, it's the same thing. You can click plus new icebreaker right there and click choose from icebreaker library. And there, there are quite a number of icebreakers as well. And for those of you who don't know what icebreakers are, essentially this is cold emailing and you know, people don't have a, a warm relationship with you yet. You wanna 
break the ice. Just so it's not all business, you, you say some nice things about them, um, maybe a little bit of small talk, recognition, things like that. And what's great about these icebreakers is that they use variables. You see this text in brackets, contact first name. So let's say your contact's name is Mark and you don't have to type Mark's name out. It would just like when you copy paste this, looks like we have similar connections. Let's, let's connect Mark. And once you have this contact directory, you're not gonna need to type everyone's first names individually. The variables feature is just gonna grab them from that database. So if we go to contacts right here, I don't have any contacts, but if we click plus new contact right there, it is so easy to manually type out this information. You can also create folders for a specific group of contacts, and you can also import your contacts from a spreadsheet. And you can also add organizations and not just individuals. For the settings, you have your email accounts, and this is where the magic happens. I have eight emails connected to this account. Remember the email police I mentioned that detects if you're sending out a high volume of emails so they mark a lot of them as spam? Now, Hexaspark acts as an email revolver. With Hexaspark, whenever you send an email, bam, it fires that email out, bam, you switch emails, bam, you switch emails again every time you send an email. So this means if you have just one email and you send 50 emails out, this would be treading in dangerous territory. So for example, your goal is to send 100 emails a day. If you're using one email, you are gonna send 100 emails with that one email, which could get it marked as spammy. But if you had 10 emails taking turns, you would only be sending 10 each. Now tags are a great way to help you remember things about certain clients. For instance, I could have a better relationship with a client and I would tag them as warm. Maybe for some reason, another client is more urgent. So I would call them priority. Um, and these tags can actually stack. Essentially, it's a very good labeling system. For the default settings, you have some really simple things here, but critical things, your time format, date format, and start of the week really help you identify or have a better understanding of when your emails are being sent. Your tracking settings include tracking your email opens. That should give you insight on whether or not your subject headers are effective. Obviously, you want to track your link clicks, and this is crucial. You want to pause the campaign when replies are detected. Essentially, you want this box checked off, lest you want your clients to consider you spammy. Behold, the power of the Hexaspark browser extension. This is available on Chrome, Opera, and Firefox. I'm using the Chrome version, but they all essentially do the same thing. Now we're on LinkedIn and we are on Chris's page. We have all sorts of information here, experience, education, skills, recommendations, interests, all these things. And now watch what happens when we click the icon for the Hexaspark extension. Bam! You get all of this information scraped from his name, his last name, his email, if it's publicly available, all of this information, position, education, yeah, all of this information that is available, we can scrape it. And that is nuts. If we have an existing campaign, we can just immediately add him there. We don't have one right, right now, but we do have an icebreaker. We can set that right there and we can click add. Whoops, I already have an entry for Chris, but we can click update. Contact updated success. Okay, we're back on the Hexaspark dashboard. And as you can see, we have one contact created. That is Chris right here. When we click on his name, we can see all of that information. We even have a profile photo that we didn't have to download and re-upload into a CRM. It just like scraped it, transferred all of that, including the experience, education, leads, activity, all that activity right there and city and country. This is a completely filled out CRM contact entry. Normally you would need to hire someone to upload and organize all this information in this clean fashion. Now remember how the organizations tab was blank? Well, now we have Hexact right here because we scraped uh, Chris's information and organization came with it. And it's not just the name, you have the founding date, you have 
the number of employees, the number of followers. This is complete information as well. Now, given that the browser extension scrapes from LinkedIn and even on the social profile field, you see LinkedIn primarily, you can see that Hexaspark was designed to go hand in hand with email and LinkedIn. Okay, we're back in the contacts tab and this time we are going to import a spreadsheet. So let's click select file. Oh, before that, obviously the list must contain an email column because it's gonna send emails to those emails. I've attached a file, I'm gonna include headers, click next. Now it says here that I can map the columns for my file now. To give you an idea, I scraped those leads using Hexamatic. There were a lot of columns that I didn't really need, so thankfully we have this skip column button. I'm a bit minimalistic myself, so I'm just gonna grab the essentials. So this one's a URL, I will just call it the website URL. Now, before we create a campaign, let's create some email templates. Let's click new template right there. Again, we do have a template library. So let's say a broken link building. Let's use this one. Um, yeah, oh, let's call this create, uh, let's click create template. And this is gonna be the, uh, like a, we'll call this the uh, broken link uh, template. Right there. And I'm gonna make a new one. And again, choose from the library, guest post template right there. Let's click that. Oh, and you already have some uh, variables right there. So let's create that template as well. Let's create another one, a new template, um, choose from the library. Again, you can do all of this from scratch to be more contextual. Um, I'm just showing this for illustration purposes. Create template right there. So we have another one. Um, I'll call this template two. Very original and we will go back to email templates right we can rename it right there template three okay all right from there let's create a new campaign let's go to the campaigns tab i'll create a new campaign right here now we can either import from our existing contacts or from a new spreadsheet let's add from existing okay so we have some contacts right here we are adding them to the campaign now that they've been added, we can see if we've sent the email to them, if they've opened it, if they've clicked any links, and if they've replied. So that's great. We can click next step. Okay, so let's go to our email sequence. So let's add this very first one, broken link template. And the only trigger here is the moment we add them to the campaign, contact is added, we send the email to them. Okay, so we can actually delay that if we want. Um, not really necessary in my opinion. Um, might be useful for some situations, but now we want to add template two, and then this is the fun part. You can click trigger when after the previous step. So we can set this to be a delay. So for instance, if they don't respond within 12 hours of being sent this first one, then this second one is immediately sent. Now, if 12 hours is too soon, we can set that to days. It can be 12 days. It can be a certain number of hours. And, you know, um, we can add another one, you know, and this can go on and on and on. And you can do follow-ups for the entire year if you want to do it that way. Now, for the next step, you can choose which of your emails you want to use for your rotation. You know, I'm just going to select all of them. <laughs> Then of course you can choose if you wanna send these Mondays through Fridays, or if you wanna send them on weekends, you can select, you know, essentially when you want to send these emails. Now opt out text is very, very helpful. Like if you don't want to hear from me anymore, just let me know. Um, some Sometimes people call this a, a breakup email or, you know, it's just, a, it's a bit of text to let them know that they have the option to opt out. It is so much better for you to offer them an opt out rather than them marking you as spam. In the next step, you get a preview of the entire campaign in sequence so you can really strategize more. And here are the stats so far and once you reach stats you just click save and run and i'm not going to do that for this review lest my emails be marked as spam but i will have a long-term review for this later on okay let's talk pricing so first off hexaspark is currently on a lifetime deal currently one uh, stack one code is a 95 dollars and it will continue to go up over the following days weeks months who knows how long i think it even started at about $79 if I'm not mistaken but you know eventually this lifetime deal will go away and they will switch to a subscription model now here's the thing 
even if this were a subscription model of say maybe $30 a month, $49, something like that, I would still pick it over competitors. And here's the reason why. Woodpecker was the tool that I was previously using. And at $49 per email slot per month with, uh, you know, just A-B testing, like basic features with a limited number of contacts per month, 1,500. This tool was getting really expensive really quickly. So just dragging this upwards like so, and Matt, there you go, $54 a month and unlimited is $59 per email slot. The other thing about Woodpecker is, well, this is fairly reasonable, but uh, I, I personally don't like it. But if you unsubscribe, they will nuke your data. Like they'll give you a heads up that if you don't resubscribe, um, you have 30 days to get your data, something like that. So I eventually did fully unsubscribe. And you know, when I had these thoughts of coming back, it's like, but you know, they, they nuked my data. You know, nonetheless, it served its purpose, but um, you know, just comparing it to Hexaspark and right now at the time of recording this, just looking at the price comparison, price feature ratio, you can't beat Hexaspark. Oh, there was also this instance where I was having challenges adding my Zoho emails to Hexaspark. They were online right at that time and they really quickly uh, responded. Eventually I was able to resolve the issue myself, but I appreciated the response time and the fact that they even forwarded this to another tech team. So they probably have this first layer of support and a separate tech team. So my experience with their support has been solid. So they do have a Facebook community with 1.8 thousand members right now. Chris himself is very active and posts updates in the group. I've made some suggestions myself prior to this sponsorship deal and Chris was very responsive. You can also see he said here, thanks, we will have a look and try to get in touch with them to see if they can add us to the list of ready shared URLs with custom variables. Um, basically, they're open to suggestions. For social proof, it's very clear that Hexact knows how to prioritize. For instance, they are on B2B platforms primarily, such as LinkedIn. You see they have 2,752 followers right here and ooh, 37 employees. So that's really awesome. On Facebook, they only have 835 likes. Maybe I can be one more. On YouTube, they have a young growing subscriber base. On Twitter, Chris is the Hexact presence with 5,919 followers. But where it really counts is that on G2, a software review website, you got Hexawatch with uh, with these scores, Hexawatch, Hexameter, Hexamatic. We don't see Hexaspark yet because it is a new product, but looking at their other three products like this Succeed is a good indicator of Hexaspark's stability. They're also performing stellarly on Captera, which speaks volumes about their software. For my final thoughts, what can I say? Hexaspark is an incredible tool and I recommend it's it. It's a fairly young tool, but my experience so far has been bug-free and it is fast. Hexact Inc. is an incredible team with an ecosystem of tools that can accomplish the work of hundreds of employees. Their other tool, Hexamatic, lets me scrape hundreds of leads off of Google in just a few hours. Normally, you'd need to hire someone to do that and it would take days. Now, even if you don't have Hexamatic, the Hexaspark browser extension lets you scrape leads off of LinkedIn, add them to the Hexaspark CRM, and in the Hexaspark dashboard, you can run your own email campaign with its own unified inbox. That's four tools in one. Now, here's my favorite business decision of theirs. When you subscribe to software, you usually get unlimited this, unlimited that, but there's gotta be something that's limited or else the business becomes unsustainable. In the case of Hexaspark, what they chose to limit was the number of emails that you can use, which is the limit that I prefer. Because if you have a team of two to three people, if each of you is sending 20 emails a day and you have five emails in rotation, your team's daily email sends is hardly going to alert the email police. So that's what they limited, but what they gave us was unlimited contacts and unlimited emails sent every day, which I highly appreciate. I'll be using Hexaspark for a serious campaign in the future, so watch out for my long-term review. Whether you're a freelancer, solopreneur, or a small agency, I think you'll love Hexaspark. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button. And it helps me make more reviews like this one. And speaking of reviews, check out this other one.